So welcome to the first series, and uh, we're going to be journeying over the next five weeks through the book of um, Matthew in chapter 6, and uh, really focusing in on uh, starting the year right. Um, so we're going to be saying this word a lot, this word first, um, but it is really critical for us that you uh, install the right things first in your life as we kickstart the year. And uh, as we journey through these next five weeks, we want you to look back um, at the end of it and really has, say, God has changed my heart. God has changed um, something in me to really put my priorities in place. Um, and uh, we pray that it would really be a great journey for you and your families and impact your lives immensely. So Deline's going to get started by reading Matthew 6 uh, together and then we will uh, get started on that. Yeah, I think just before I do that, I think, you know, everyone can agree with first things first. We're like, yes, let's do that. Yeah. But it sounds great, but it's difficult to do. And I think this, mm. this chapter, Jesus is teaching as part of his Sermon on the Mount, and he's teaching some really incredible life-changing things and principles that really form the foundation of our faith. And in Matthew 6, he starts by teaching about spiritual discipline. So how it is that we can draw close to God and be connected to him. And it's things about giving to the needy and generosity, living mm. with the lifestyle of generosity. And then he teaches about prayer and he, he teaches his disciples the Lord's Prayer and how to pray. And he teaches them about fasting. So these are all things that help us to get connected and stay connected to God. And then this week we're talking about first, you need to direct your heart's focus. Okay. And so that's the first thing that we need to do. And so we want to pick up from verse 19 in Matthew 6. And it says this, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moths and rust or vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Hmm. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And I think that's quite a familiar passage. And if you've been around in church, you've probably heard it before. But it is so incredibly profound because it talks about ultimately what do you value and how do you decide what you value? Because in, in many ways, it's a decision that you yeah. have to make. Yeah. And I think it's so relevant that we, we're doing home group material around this because we're actually entering into people's homes. And as you're watching this in, in your home group setting, um, we're in the core of your, of, of your space. And I think when people enter into somebody else's space, um, it really is your heart. It's, it's you make your home your home and out of who you are comes that space. Um, and values and everything can be seen in someone's home. Uh, so we, we, we will almost be part of your heart in the series and I'm looking forward to being part of that. So this little passage where it says, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Mm. I mean, that's, that's a hard thing to do. <laughs> Jesus is kind of, you know, he's teaching this stuff. And I was listening to a podcast about this the other day, and it says, because um, it, it kind of carries on then about don't worry, and, you know, we'll, we'll yeah. see later as we go on about don't worry about earthly things. And I think there's a part of us that's like, oh, that's Jesus, human nature. That's human nice, nature but it sounds worry. a little bit hippie, you know, like <laughs> you have to actually care. You have, you're supposed to have an investment and retirement annuities, and you're supposed to be planning yeah. for the future, and you're supposed to be responsible. And there's a part of this that's like, well, that's nice, but it's not really realistic. Well, I think, I don't think it's saying don't do that. I, I don't think it's saying, but it's just saying, what is the purpose of your life beyond just the things that you accumulate? Um, because if, if all your life is, is to accumulate things um, and to put, put the comforts in place, almost like padding yourself with cushions, then you yeah and security then you've missed the point of your life um, because then you're not available as well to be used by God to to step out where God needs you to step out because your heart is so focused on your comforts and making sure that your retirement's in place and making sure I don't think God's necessarily saying don't do those things he's just saying let that not be the focus of your life yeah. I think the critical word there for me is treasure because it says mm. don't store up treasure on earth and we have to decide what is it that we value, what do we treasure. Mm. So we can store up things on earth as we need them, you know, there's other parts of Proverbs and things mm. that speaks about, you know, you have to look at the ants and see how they and the, the, the animals that gather for the harvest in the, and store up for the winter. We have to be wise and prudent, Yes. but, but we can't treasure those things, we have to understand that those things are not what make your life. Yeah. 
Um, but it's it's hard to do, you know, because I think the world sells us this consumer culture yeah. and that you have to be kind of hoarding stuff. There's mm. this real materialistic kind of culture that we live in. And I love there's this um, quote from C.S. Lewis from the Chronicles of Narnia from the Voyage of the Dawn Treader, where the little boy Eustace is, um, there's a whole story with a dragon and anyway, so he finds <laughs> this dragon's lair. And so there's this quote that I always think about and that I love, it says, Sleeping in a dragon's ho- sleeping on a dragon's hoard with greedy dragonish thoughts in his heart, he had become a dragon himself. Yeah. And there's there's such a powerful image of how when we hoard stuff up and we we kind of store things for ourselves because really what is that? That's that's the opposite of faith. When mm. we when we gather up things for ourselves in this life and hoard it in a dysfunctional way, instead of living with generosity, like the beginning of Matthew yeah. six talks about. It shows a lack of faith. It shows that we don't believe that God is able to take care of us. Yeah. Um, and so we actually end up becoming dragons ourselves mm. in the way that we become people who hold on to things that don't have value in the end. Yeah. I think it's twofold and I think you need to change your mindset in it. Um, you know, we're, we're in, that, in that same scripture that you're talking about, and together, we need to gather. We're made in that in that way god requires us to till the earth and to reap a harvest but it's what you do with that harvest and i think if you change your mindset of one of just gather 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 and store 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 uh, the ants use up that in the winter time mm-hmm. and, uh, and in, an, in in a lot of ways um god's saying store up the treasures in heavens because the seasons of winter come and we need to be able to draw from the wellspring of life, in essence, mm-hmm. to 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 sustain ourselves in yeah. the in the seasons when we might not have. Well, I mean, a lot. it's telling us we should yeah. store up treasures. Just exactly. saying, you've got to be careful about where, not yeah. not here, yeah. but in, in heaven. heaven. Yeah, well, no, no, we'll get there. But yeah. the, the second part is, when when we storing up, is do we say to God, okay, God, I'm storing up things here, so you know. In a, a, monetary value or um, you know possessions but do we say to God okay God I've stored up I've maybe got a bit more than what I actually truly need okay what do you want me to do with the rest what do you want me to so are you giving it back to God because it, it, like it says in here it's it's a heart condition mm-hmm. not a matter of accumulating or not accumulating and being able to um, say to God this is yours and not mine um, in our harvesting, in our story. And I think, you know, why does Jesus care about this stuff? It's because yeah. he says you've got to be careful where you store, where you treasure things yeah. because your heart's going to follow your treasure. Yeah. And at the end of the day, what he cares about is your heart. Yeah. And so, you know, there's that parable of the rich fool in Luke chapter 12 that speaks exactly about this is mm. the farmer who um, had so much. And so he, th- he built bigger barns instead of going with his, ex- his extra and his excess and his surplus. He... He wasn't generous with it. Instead, he said, I'm going to store up more for yeah, myself. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, God came that night and he said, you fool, don't you understand? Tonight your soul will be required of you because he had focused on all the wrong mm. things and he was rich in things that weren't going to last for eternity. So I guess the first thing we have to do in terms of directing our heart's focus is we have to decide what we're going to treasure. Yeah. And it, well, again, it's that it's where your value, what you place value in will determine what your heart focuses on. Um, and if we truly value our relationship with Christ, and it's a simple letter, added letter or, or taken away letter, it's value and values. And our values will determine our value. And our value will determine our values. They kind of work together because what we value is where we will put our value in. Um, and, what, and what we put our value in will show the world where our values are. (laughs) Does that make sense? Um, Maybe stop it for a little bit and just play that again. But just one word, values and value, can change our mindsets very quickly. Either one can play off each other. Um, But it is, it's all about where's your treasure, where's your heart at. And if I had to ask, you know, what are are the things that you hold most dear in this life, then you're probably going to tell me it's my family or it's this or it's that, you know, and but I think a good test of this stuff is to go and say, okay, well, look at your calendar and look at your bank statements. <laughs> what are you spending your time on? 
And what are you spending your money on? Your, the resources that you have, your physical resources and your emotional resources, your time resources. Where are those going? Yeah. Because the things that you really value will be getting the most of those things. Mm. And that's sometimes a bit sobering when you do yeah. that. It's just taking a look at um, where you place that value. It's as simple as that. And this is not a, this is not a tight sermon, but it is about where you place your heart. Um, we're not trying to <laughs> get you to, you know, the normal church scenario where everybody wants your money. But we are, we're looking more at the heart. We're looking at the condition of where you are placing your life, not your bank account. Um, but but what Deline is saying is that your bank account will de- it will give you a good portrayal. It will give you a mirror as to where you are spending your money is the things that you actually value, uh, is where you're placing your value. Um, you know, a lot of people will overspend on Christmas presents. We've just had Christmas because they want to overindulge their families. Um, and that causes a whole lot of damage in itself. But that's where your treasure lies. It's like, I want to just completely give my kid everything that they, they possibly want. Um, and we, that's a whole other sermon series in itself. But just in that, you will see where your value sits. Um, you might put all your money into fancy cars you might put all your man you might spend all your money on yourself and you you, you, you your value of your heart is actually yourself me above all else um, I will store up for me I will buy the things that really satisfy me um, and we can sometimes be our own hearts uh, desire for everything so just where you place your heart is you will see um, your bank account reflect that So then I guess we have to ask ourselves, how do we practically go about doing this? How do we actually store up treasure in heaven? And so we spoke about how it's deciding what we treasure and making the the conscious decision to to choose to value things that have eternal impact and have eternal value and not just things that are temporary. But it's, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing to do. I think it boils down to fundamentally, obviously there's a variety of things that you can encapsulate this with, but it boils down to how much energy and time are you putting into your relationship with God? Because that relationship is an eternal, now hear me, an eternal relationship, which means that it goes forever. So how much we invest in that relationship um, is actually pretty much what we were created for. Um, to be in relationship with God. Obviously, we were meant to be in relationship with with Him, with each other, with ourselves, and with creation. And I think when when if we can really f- focus in on those four relationships um, and build into those relationships, primarily God relationships, um, and with God first. Uh, there's that word again. Um, first is actually building into our relationship, spending the time with Him, creating times where we can really just bring God into our lives, you know, happy moments where we can say, God, just thank you. This is an incredible moment in my life or God, I'm so in need of you right now or whatever the case may be. And I think that's the critical thing for me is start with relationship with God, then relationships with others um, and relationships with ourselves. You know, am I becoming more Christ-like, which means becoming whole within myself? And then creation. Are we looking after creation? And that's a whole nother ball game there with the state of the world at the moment. But uh, those are the four relationships for me that are critical. And I suppose it's all about connecting with God because God has the perfect eternal perspective. Yes. And so when we spend time with Him, you know, it's when you spend time with a friend, you get to see their perspective on the world and you kind of, mm. you, you start to take on their ways of thinking about things. Yeah. And when you spend time with God, when you engage with him, you're able to take on his perspective about life. Mm. Um, and I know often in crisis situations, you know, when people are really ill or when something happens, you know, things suddenly get so clear in your mind. It's like, well, why am I doing all this other stuff? Things become really clear to you as to what matters and yeah. what doesn't matter. But we have to live with that perspective every day. Mm. And so we have to decide what will our hearts be focused on. We have to make the decision to connect with God so that He can give us that eternal perspective on life. And then we also decide what we'll store up because storing up is not just about resources and possessions. We can store up a lot of things we shouldn't. Things like (laughs) resentment and anger and baggage and unforgiveness. And a lot of us have got 
a whole bunch of storage that we don't yeah, need. Even church hurt. <laughs> Uh, you know, we store up things where the church has hurt us or people in the church have hurt us and then uh, that accumulates and accumulates and accumulates and that can be damaging to your relationship again primarily with God um, and then obviously others in the church. Um, so yeah, so, just be careful what you're storing up. So we have to make sure that we decide on our heart's focus, we decide what things we'll value yeah. and then we decide what we're going to store up. Are we going to store up things in our lives that bring life and joy? Or are we going to store up things that actually just weigh us down? Yeah. And when we store up, we start to focus on the things that are vitally important. We start to, our eyes open up to the things that um, are pleasing to God because we're focusing in on Him as the first things first um, in our lives. And then you see your relationships with others, um, even those that are far from God, your heart starts to yearn for them to have the relationship with God that you do. And it stirs up an evangelical heart in you. Um, so it's, you know, the things of God become the treasures of your heart. Mm. When you treasure eternal things, then your heart will follow and God can give you that kingdom impact in the world as you see things through his eyes yeah. and see people the way that he does. Yeah. So first of all, decide <laughs> on your heart's focus. 